Welcome back. We are back in the mission editor and today we're going to start working on the objective part of this series and we'll start with placing units and giving them instructions. We're going to begin over on the objective section which is on the left hand side and we're going to place an aircraft which is the top button. Once you click the aircraft button on the left hand side you get another menu pop up on the right. We're just going to click on this map to place the unit to begin with which means that we can then access these other options. So at the top, recently DCS updated to now have Aerial-1 as the new standard group name for all Aerial units. If you delete Aerial and leave Dash-1 and put your name of the unit here, so say we will put test and you then use Control-C to copy that group, click somewhere else and Control-Paste, you'll see that the next one continues that naming fashion, which can be quite helpful when you're organizing your units. The next option allows you to set the condition of the unit if you want it to already be damaged. Okay, the next section is country. You can have combat countries, all countries as the new cycling option. But if you wanted to include neutral units, combat just has red and blue. And the ones that you selected in the previous screen will be available. Depending on which aircraft you want to place, you might have to change the country to get access to certain aircraft. For example, if we pick the USA and then we come down to type and we try and find the J11, these are organized alphabetically, you'll see that it's just not there. But if you were to change this to China, you then have access to the J11. So that's an example. There's a, quite a few different units that you can and can't get with certain countries. You might have to play around with it. Although I'm sure someone's got a handy dandy spreadsheet of which one's available with which country. Low country is the tasking. There are lots of different taskings. And again, picking certain taskings tends to then lock you from picking certain aircraft or picking certain aircraft locks you from picking certain taskings. I usually pick the aircraft that I want first and then select the tasking or just set them to nothing because then that unlocks everything. Unit is the unit that you currently have. So this is the unit that we have selected. It's unit one of one. If we increase this to two, you see it places another one next to it. And we're now looking at unit two of two because that's highlighted yellow. You can then cycle between them like this, or you can just click on them like this. Either works. The skill is where you set how good you'd like the AI to be, which is all the way down to random. If you're making a multiplayer mission, this will say client. If you've got an aircraft that can be, it might say player if it's, and that will immediately put you into that aircraft when you spawn that mission. Uh, I would recommend having it on trained or higher because rookie tend to not react to things like you firing missiles at them very well. They tend to just fly straight into them, which is kind of silly. Okay, next is the pilot name. Again, this follows the group name. So it's test dash one, and then it's number one. So it's dash one again. So the name of your group affects the name of the pilot and then the pilots sequentially move up what dash one, dash two, dash three, etc. This is useful for things like scripting. If you want to put the names of the units in the script, you can copy and paste it in Excel. It will auto add all the numbers for you and then copy it across. Or if you're doing triggers, it's easy to find them organized. So it's a slightly more advanced thing, but you can think about it if you want at the start. Next is a tail number. That's just a number that appears on the tail of the aircraft. Next is radio, whether you want it to have a radio, the frequency you want it to be preset to, and the band AM or FM. The call sign is what the AI AWACS and airfield will use to contact you. There's a list of them here. You can call it whatever you want. And then number one or, or group one, number two. Hidden on map means that the unit is still there, but you can't see it. Hidden on planner means that you can see it on the map here, but if you were to go into the mission planning mode, which you can do before you actually fly, you wouldn't see that unit. Hidden on MFD means it won't show up on the MFDs in the game. Late activation is very useful for if you're making triggers to have a unit be there, but not actually be active, and then say it would spawn in at a random point or a set point in time, depending on radio options and where other stuff is. It's, it gets more complicated, but there's the tick box to start it off. And then you have your tabs down here. So you have the, the root tab. So this is waypoint zero because we haven't set any waypoints yet of one because it has to be one. But if we go to add and then 
click where we'd like that waypoint to be. You can now see it says waypoint one of two because this is waypoint zero, this is waypoint one. You can name the waypoints which will appear on aircraft such as the F-18, etc., that are more modern and have actual named waypoints. So you can name things like the bullseye, the target, the initial point. We have type, so this tells you what's happening at that waypoint. So at waypoint one, we can make them land to refuel. It can be a point where they turn in space. It can be a point they simply just fly over, or it can be a place where they just land. That's because waypoint zero, if we use the arrow to go back to waypoint zero, starts them at a turning point, which means that that aircraft will spawn in the air where it is. But you can change the first point to fly over point, take off from one runway, will snap it to the nearest runway, and change that airfield to that coalition. So you can see Sanaki Kolki became blue. Sometimes you'll place an aircraft or a unit or something, and you'll set this type, and then it will just disappear. And that's because it's gone off somewhere to some to whatever it thinks is the most appropriate place. And then you've got to find it, which is good fun. I'll show you how to find it at the end as a little bonus tip. Okay, so when you have takeoff from runway, obviously the altitude is fixed at the feet of the runway. The speed is fixed at zero, and the mark is obviously fixed at zero because these are tied together. You have a start time of when you'd like that aircraft to be available from. So the mission starts at eight by default. So you can see this is available from the beginning. If I change this, it would still appear in the list, but you wouldn't be able to fly it until this time gets hit. So we're going to change this to parking hot because that's very useful for multiplayer missions that you just want to get going, like the ones that I do in GR, where we don't want to spend 20 minutes starting up an aircraft in an hour and a half mission. So once you've got them set, they'll snap to a nearest parking. You can change the parking by using this drop down box and it will move whichever aircraft, so in our case we had the second aircraft selected to that parking spot, you can then move subsequent ones in that flight to whichever parking spot you desire. In the altitude setting, if you've got a waypoint in the air, you can also be MSL, which is above mean sea level, or AGL above the ground. But if you have a waypoint that's in the air or on the ground that you've made, so this is waypoint one that we clicked earlier, you can see it has the altitude. This is the altitude that the AI would try and get to when it hits that waypoint. So they're going to try and get to six and a half thousand feet. The speed in knots or in mark, you can change this and it changes both of them. In later videos, we will use the advanced waypoint options where you can make it do things at certain waypoints. If you want to delete a waypoint, you simply click delete and it's gone. Edit lets you grab and move waypoints. So if I add one and then edit, you can just click and drag this wherever you want. Now, a lot of that is similar for any type of vehicle that you want to use. So for example, if we come back over to the left hand side, we click ship. We now have naval one on the right hand side, but otherwise the options are very similar. We're going to place down our ship. It's a armed um, speedboat. You'll see that you can no longer drive this as a player because it's got rid of the client slot. It's just AI. However, there is a game master only option, which means that if you make game master slots, only they can control this unit. Some other small differences with units, you have category, so you can have amphibious assault, carrier, civilian. There's different types of unit here, and then in the type, it will just give you the ones that are in that category, which is a helpful recent feature of DCS. And armor, we're going to pick, we're just going to place this down in Sunaki Kolki. Again, you place it the same way, you just click it wherever you want it. Now, there are, again, a few small differences. There is the category, which you can pick any of these. So if we would say pick air defense, there's a subcategory. You can have AAA, the control units, the generators. There's whatever you pick here locks the type. Whereas if you have all, you have a big list of all of them or whichever country you've selected. You have their skill, which is the same, but you also have the heading because it's a unit on the ground. If you were to place aircraft on the ground in this manner with the ground hot option, which is new in DCS, which I'll show you in a second, you can then use the heading to spin them around. So if I zoom in, you'll see him doing his little uh, disco dance wherever you want to go. But you've got your aircraft and you want to place it as a ground hot, like I just mentioned, and you've got it set as, well, veteran in this case, and you'll come down to type and you're like, but oh, wait a minute, there's not a ground hot option. 
well, AI aircraft must be placed on the parking spots. However, if you change this to client, then you can come back down to type and then you've got take off from ground, which is cold. And then you can do the disco spin with that one and also ground hot. And then you can just click and drag and place it wherever you like. Now, there is a limiting factor here, and that is that you might place it too far away from a source of ammunition or fuel. That's if you place it outside this ring. So if you say you placed it here, you wouldn't be able to get any ammo or fuel and you'd have to add the ground units to make that work. I'll show you that in a different video when we do FARP setup. So back to units. Also, if you then add a waypoint somewhere else, it will snap to that direction. Some units are transportable, which means that they can be packed up and put into other units via advanced scripting or AI tasking. That's done with this tick box here. Another difference is the type here in the waypoint route options. You can have them start off road, which means wherever you click them, they should appear there unless the game knows that it can't put a unit there in which case you'll get some kind of warning saying, please place this on available ground. Let's try doing that now. So for this example, I'm going to take a static object, which is this truss looking icon. And we're going to pick a FARP, which is in the heliports FARP, because these things get very finicky. They don't like being put on mountains. So if we were to place that, you can see it says terrain is too steep. That's the kind of message you'll get if the game doesn't like what you're doing. So. If you don't want off-road, you can also see there's lots of other options. Like if you click on road, the unit will, sometimes it will just snap to a road and sometimes it will say drive to the road. And from then on, if you add other waypoints, they will just appear at the nearest available piece of road. Now this is useful because if you're making units drive off-road, they tend to have pathing issues when they try and go around some buildings and that can cause lag in big multiplayer missions. It's fine usually for small missions. It's also usually okay if you only have a small group of units, say two or three units. But if you have a large group, like five or ten, that can get a little tricky. Whereas on-road tends to work a lot better. And then you can also have them moving in a formation such as line abreast if you have more than one. In this case, it will make no difference because there's only one unit. We also, you'll see that we also have a second tab, which is the ammo, which is available on certain things. So for the ground unit, such as this, it just allows you to change their paint scheme, which sometimes doesn't even look different. Sometimes it does. However, if you have an aircraft selected and you go to the payload, which is the ammo screen, you can see that you can have it civilian, which will have nothing. Because we set this as a task of CAS, we only have the CAS loadouts available. However, if we change this to say cap, you can see that you can't use the A10A for cap and therefore it has automatically changed it to the next unit in the list, which in this case is a vegan, and shown us the cap rolls. So sometimes the mission editor can throw you about a bit. You'll have to change this back to S and then change it back to the A10A, which we had selected originally, and then pick a type that is actually available like ground attack. And you can see it gives you different loadouts that are preset. You can also change these yourself by just right clicking and add in the weapon. So you go to this mission payload and it works the same way as it does in game. You just pick whichever weapons you particularly would like to use on whichever station. You can also restrict weapons now, which is a new feature. So now you could say, oh, I don't want you to use this weapon at all. And therefore, if you click these two, the weapon might be available in the mission, but this particular unit can't load it. This gives you control over which weapons you can use in which aircraft and also which stations they're allowed to be put on. Over on the right you also have the amount of fuel that they have. It works the same way it does in the armament screen. You can simply type it in if that's what you want to do. It will give you the max weight down here that will change depending on what weapons you selected as well. You can select their chaff, flare, the gun percentage of ammo. You can see it's down at zero because we clicked civilian earlier. You can change the ammo types. We also have the triggered actions tab, which is advanced. We won't go into that. And the summary, which tells you the start time, how long it's going to take to fly the route, how long the route is, and the average speed of the route. Okay, thank you for watching. That's the basics of how to set up a unit. I did say there's a bonus tip. If you lost an aircraft, well, that's the unit list option that you have on the left hand side. The second to last button in the objective section, view unit list, brings up the list of stuff.
And if you know what the last thing you was that you picked, you can simply click on it and it will take you to wherever that is. So ground unit, the first unit, the naval unit, which seems to, there we go, is here. And it also tells you if it's part of a special pack, like the World War II assets pack that people may or may not have, you can quickly see if you've made your mission restricted. It also gives you a summary, which is very helpful. That's for another day. Hope to see you next time. If you liked it, then please like the video. Subscribe if you want to see future videos. I plan to continue this series as and when I can. Until next time, goodbye.